What's the word, y'all? Uh, today we're doing a mega experiment because <laughs> I am not talking about a top market team. Uh, I am talking about these Charlotte Hornets today. And my apologies that this is coming out later than usual. I sat here on this beanbag chair and slept for maybe two and a half hours when I should have been working. So my apologies for that, but better late than never. Um, we're talking about the Charlotte Hornets, which is like, this will probably be my the least viewed video of all time because I don't know how many people care about the Charlotte Hornets. But at this this current time, before the season has started, I somewhat care about the Charlotte Hornets because I think they're going to be an interesting team. An interesting, um, by definition for me, is fun. You know, be sure to leave a like on the video. Subscribe if you are new. Uh, we do this basketball talk here very often. Philly fans are going to be mad at me because for the last three videos, I've been talking about how I wanted to talk about Philly. But, yeah, I've postponed it at least another day. But I do want to talk about Portland. So Portland may be coming before Philly. I have, I literally have no idea. Can we talk about Charlotte? Oh, my God. So, first of all, um, this has to go back all the way to last year. Before last season started, uh, you know I have a podcast if you want to look for it. Somebody in the comment section to tell you what it's called, I guess. Uh, and every year we do like this guessing the amount of wins. It's such a bad thing because you always look like an idiot at the end of the season because you're going to get 80% of them wrong, whether it be because of injury or somebody not living up to expectation. And one thing that I got wrong, all of my guys got wrong, and pretty much everybody in the world got wrong, is how good the Charlotte Hornets were going to be. Now, they were not good. <laughs> they were not good, but they were very much better than what we expected. Like, I remember what, uh, doing that episode, and I was like, we rank in the 15th team. Charlotte's probably second to last. Only the Knicks will be worse. And obviously, both of those things were completely wrong. Um, Charlotte was good in some aspects. They they were, at the best, a very fun team to watch. One of the reasons why everybody got that wrong is because nobody could have um, expected the emergence of Vontae Graham. Think about where he was his rookie season compared to what he ended up being his sophomore season. Dramatically different. Um and you could say, like, oh, he was supposed to get better. Not everybody gets better in their second season. I'm sh We always want to say, oh, a guy like Jason Tatum, he's only 22 years old. He should be better next year. Not all progression is linear. Like, everybody just don't keep jumping like that. Some people just don't. And Vontae, based off his first season, wasn't doing that. I had a tweet. Um, Devontae Graham had a ridiculous game. I, I want to see if I can figure out what game that was. He had a ridiculous game where he like capped it off with like a game winner. And I was watching it and I made a tweet and I was like, man, this is out of nowhere. And there were people in my comment section like, no, we knew this was coming. That's just lie. That's just blatant lying. The man went from, um, in 14 minutes averaging four points per game where he couldn't hit a three point shot to 18 points per game when he was shooting a little above league average on a lot of attempts. Nobody expected that. So his, his, uh, emergence was very important to this team being as good as they were. And they're one of those teams. Um, they were like, we're not just going to suck. We're going to try our best. We're going to try our best. We're going to put our best foot forward. We're going to win as many games as possible with our roster and let everything fall into place. And it did, right? They end up jumping up in the lottery and they end up getting the number three pick and taking LaMelo ball. Now, not only do they have LaMelo Ball, they have the sexiest jerseys, um, one of the sexiest jerseys in the league, bro. That that blue jersey is ridiculous, bro. So I was talking to my guys about when you have LaMelo Ball, Vontae Graham, and we're going to talk about Gordon Hayward, of course, and everything else there. This team will be on national TV probably more than they have been in the last two seasons. And you remember just a year ago, they had Kemba Walker, but like people didn't really care about Charlotte. LaMelo Ball is one of the biggest question marks in the NBA right now. A lot of people love him, and I know a lot of people that aren't as high on him. And a lot of people like me who can only really see the highlights of those games when he's playing overseas don't really know what to expect. So he's going to get a lot of national televised games early in the season because people want to see what LaMelo Ball is like. And then when they're on national TV and people are going to realize that Vontae Graham is pretty good, even though his efficiency was really bad in the second season, I'm expecting that to get a little bit better. And we talk about Gordon Hayward. Now, y'all know I'm deep into this NBA world and not only do I used to read, um, reading has been taken over by podcasts, by the way, for me. And I was listening to Zach Lowe's podcast, and he was talking about, like, I know the world see the the contract that Gordon Hayward was given and think that that was an extreme overpay. But according to Zach Lowe, the Boston Celtics were ready to give him $110 million. Uh, the Pacers were ready to give him around $110 million in a signing trade. So the fact that the Charlotte Hornets paid $120 million ain't that much of an overpay. Right. Compared to what his market was now, even one hundred and ten million from the Celtics, even one hundred and ten million from the Pacers. And my eyes would have been an overpay, but his market was significantly high. And the Charlotte Hornets were a team that are projected to have so much cap space for next season. And they have a bad reputation of just giving money because they have it. And instead of that, they got a guy that I guess Michael Jordan is a huge, huge fan of. 
right? They got a guy who, when he's healthy, um, is an impactful player. And that's the big thing about Gordon Hayward, of course, is the when he is healthy. He had came into a situation when he signed with the Boston Celtics where he had signed to the Boston Celtics, and at the worst, he was going to be looked at as the second option behind Kyrie Irving. And then the first five minutes of his Boston Celtics career, he goes down with that injury, and he falls down a totem pole to not – he's not number two anymore, but now Jason Tatum is here, and he's a lot better, so now Gordon Hayward is number three. Oh, uh, Kyrie Irving is gone, and he is replaced with Kemba Walker, so now he's down to, to number four because, oh, now Jalen Brown is averaging 20 points per game. And Gordon Hayward sat there, and he accepted it, and he played his role to perfection. Um, when, you, when you really don't think about it, I mean, the man averaged close to 20 points per game, and it's like the fourth option when he was healthy extremely efficient plays defense very well can play make and creates his own shot there is a market for a guy like Gordon Hayward when he is healthy the only thing that is scary to me of course is the health but like he's already plus 30 years old and those last those last two years might be really rough right and then there is even with this a huge ceiling on it like bringing in Gordon Hayward for this team is not making them a contender bringing Gordon Hayward into this team does not I mean it makes them a playoff contender but it's it falls into the thing of of this Charlotte Hornets over the past decade, where it seems like their their ceiling is let's make the playoffs, and of course they haven't been able to do that consistently. But they continue to put together rosters that's like let's make the playoffs, and it hasn't been it hasn't got that much farther. Uh, now they hoping on Lamelo Ball blossoming into a star. I'm not putting that on him as rookie season, especially as a rookie guard. It's usually pretty tough. Uh, but they hoping that Lamelo Ball turns into a star, and maybe year three Gordon Hayward still ain't ain't regressed, and now Lamelo Ball is better, and now maybe you're more than just a seventh, eighth seed because Lamelo Ball is blossoming into a star. It's like all living in this like fictional hypothetical world, but like I can see what they are going for. At the end of the day, I think that this Charlotte Hornets team should be fun. Lamelo Ball. Um, even if you love him or hate him, you gotta admit he's a very good playmaker, and he's gonna have like guys like Miles Bridges, uh, Malik Monk, who are high flyers that go up and get it on that break. Vontae is gonna be there, and we ain't even talked about Scary Terry, who like had a really sneaky good year because the way I had saw Terry Rozier my, before he got to Charlotte was like, oh, that was extreme overpay for a guy that never basically never started a game, and he's kind of a shot chucker. Um, but obviously the team wasn't terrible last year and he was their starting point guard. So there has to be some value in him. And it's already been rumored that that value might be dealing deal, dealt to the Clippers because now you have Vontae who's like 6'1", LaMelo Ball maybe 6'7", but he's a point guard. And of course, um, of Terry Rozier. At the end of the day, I think this team is going to be fun, but there is obviously a ceiling on where they could be. There's a ceiling. You still got Cody Zeller as probably your starting center. You still you brought back Bismack Biyombo, bro. Bismack Biyombo must be loved in that locker room for him to get the big bag that he got. Usually, this is the way it works. If if somebody gets a huge bag from an organization and he doesn't turn out to be anything good, they usually don't get that second contract because the fans are like, bro, we gave this man forty million and he ain't done nothing, nothing. But he must be loved in that locker room for them to give him that bag a few years ago and then bring him back for real, for real. Um. This is all goes to the same point that I made in a couple videos. That like, there are so many teams out there getting better. There are some teams out there that may not be getting better, but were already good. Like the Boston Celtics losing losing Gordon Hayward is going to be a hit. Uh, I I don't want to hide it from you, Celtics fans. Your team on paper is worse today than it was a couple weeks ago, and you hope that the that Jason Tatum does get better than what he was and maybe turns into superstardom instead of just all stardom. You hope that Jalen Brown continues that that great play that he had, and you hope that Kimball Walker's knees are fine. You know, you hope that that's the case because you are worse today than you were a couple weeks ago. And I think that maybe I'll make my own video on the Boston Celtics in the near future. But like it hurts to lose Gordon Hayer for nothing. It just does. We had all saw the rumors about the Indiana Pacers being very interested in Gordon Hayward. They couldn't get the deal done. And the deal not being done, according to Zach Lowe, had a lot to do with the Boston Celtics not wanting to take on Miles Turner's contract. Which is a bit weird to me because I think Miles Turner is like the prototypical center for what you're trying to do in Boston. But they didn't want to do it, according to Zach Lowe, because he's making $18 million a year and they don't see that as a valuable contract when you toss in Kemba's contract, when you toss in Jalen Brown's contract, and you toss in Jason Tatum's new extension. Added another $18 million on the books probably wasn't the smartest idea, according to Danny Ainge. Danny Ainge has this thing, and I don't know how this video transitioned to the Boston Celtics talk, but here we are. Danny Ainge, to me, seems like the type of guy that's really good when he can get the deal done because he is so, uh, he, he just wants to finesse all the time. 
He just wants to finesse all the time. I'm not going to do a linear deal. We're going to we, we have to finesse you. So not only do we want Miles Turner, we want Victor Ladipo back. You say no. All right. I guess we're just going to lose Gordon Hayward for nothing. You know, at the end of the day, um, I believe this is like I was looking at the teams out east. Uh, the, the Charlotte Hornets are going to get more nationally televised games than the, the Cavs, the Bulls, the Knicks. Like like all of those, low, they might not get more than Atlanta because Atlanta revamped and looked pretty good, and Trey Young is an all-star already. Uh, but like those lower six teams in the Eastern Conference other than the Atlanta Hawks, the Charlotte Hornets should get more nationally televised games than them, which is good for Charlotte fans. When I was in Charlotte, every and it was for All-Star Weekend, so there was a lot of fans coming into the city that weren't fans of the Hornets, but like I saw a lot of Hornets merch, a lot of it walking around the city. Again, we're talking about All-Star Weekend. So I was there as a Bulls fan. My, my homie was there as a Knicks fan. And we're all rocking our gear because we want to represent our guys, even if our guys aren't in the All-Star game. But there was a ton of fan loyalty in Charlotte. And that's that's what you want. You know, that's what you want. Because they could have been looking real, real bad. Talking about uh, uh, expansion and relocation, potentially. So I hope everything goes well for them over the next couple seasons. I'm excited to watch them play. And everything I said in this video could turn out to be wrong. They could they could throw out a roster at the beginning of next season, and it just looks terrible. And then, well, this video is irrelevant. I'll see you all tomorrow. I'm sorry this is a late upload. Peace.